also got the San Diego Charger brass into a huge conundrum. What if Philip Rivers had, you know, come into camp on time? Would he have started? Would the Chargers have gone 12 and 4? Would they have tanked? And now what do you do with the first round draft pick QB with no place to play, not to mention a 42 year old on the bench? Questions, questions, questions. Chris Berman has the answers. Nothing seemed to be going right. He throws and it's picked off. I think it was at the point where I was just trying too hard. It's picked off! It just became not a very good situation. Drew Brees was supposed to be the Chargers quarterback of the future. Brees picked off! But after leading San Diego to a 2-9 and nine record as their starter last season, he looked to be the Chargers quarterback of the past. As an organization, we felt quite strongly we had to improve the play of the quarterback position. You know, we went out and, of course, we acquired Phillip Rivers. When I first was drafted here, I envisioned myself as the guy who would play his entire career here and be kind of the quarterback of the future for this team, and now all of a sudden they're calling somebody else the quarterback of the future. I wanted to come in from day one and, and practice and compete uh, like I was going to be the guy uh, the first game. Ever since, you know, the, the day the season ended last year, I knew I was the starting quarterback of this team and that I would continue to be you know, no matter who they tried to bring in. The competition between Breeze and Phillip Rivers never happened. Rivers held out of training camp and missed the first 25 days of the preseason. It's easy to play the what-if game. Obviously, with the, the contract uh, delays and, and that, that not getting done, that obviously didn't help me any in the, as far as the competition goes of being the starter. I wouldn't have even known he was there, even if he was. I wasn't competing against Philip Rivers. I was competing against myself. In my mind, I was already starting quarterback. I was always going to be a starting quarterback. And there was a level that I was trying to reach, and that's what I was focused on. I knew Drew the way he, he thought, and I knew he was going to automatically, you know, take it, take it on as a challenge to him. You know, got two charges, going to tank, or I can lead this team to the playoffs. He chose the latter. Breeze responded with a Pro Bowl season, throwing 27 touchdowns and leading the Chargers to the playoffs for the first time since 1995. I don't think you can go out there and be afraid to fail. You know, it happens. It happens to the best of them. I think once you realize that, you're able to go out there and just relax and turn it loose. He got hot. He started throwing the ball all over the field. You know, he couldn't miss. He wasn't throwing interceptions at all. He was throwing a lot of touchdowns. Despite his success this year, Breeze's future with the Chargers remains in doubt. He'll be a free agent at season's end, while Rivers is signed to a six-year, $40.5 million contract. Yeah, some people might think that's kind of an uncomfortable situation or awkward, you know. It's not really. It's obviously, you know, <laughs> maybe the better I do, the worse it is for him, and the worse I do, the better it is for him. We're both here. We both want to be the quarterback uh, for the San Diego Chargers, and uh, but we're both put here uh, by somebody else's choice and decisions. I'm going to keep preparing and getting better and working as if I'm going to take the snap the first game next season. If I'm meant to be a San Diego Charger next year or for the rest of my career, then that's the way it's meant to be. If, it, if it's not, then it's not. Maybe it wasn't Drew Brees the first three seasons, because his first three, he went 10 and 17, had more picks than touchdowns. This season, it's Drew, 65% completion, 27 and seven. Now, that's just one year. We of course, their glory years were very early on, and you have the Joe Namath Super Bowl, and that's all you need to know about the history of the New York Jets, John. And, and they're trying to get something back and get it started right here today, and I think it's going to be important for, as I said earlier, for Chad Pennington to, to show that he can throw the ball and throw it early. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out on, on, on the first offensive play and threw a deep one. And they're going to get the ball because Nate Kading, a rookie out of Iowa, picked in the third round, very high for a kicker. There he is to another rookie, Jericho Cotchery, who's the new Jets run-back man. He took over a few weeks ago. He ran one back 94 yards for a touchdown. Last week in St. Louis. Still some smoke from the fireworks enveloping the stadium, but here we go in San Diego with a kick fielded by Cotchery at the five-yard line, and straight up the middle he comes to the 27-yard line. First and 10 there for the Jets, and here they are offensively. Barton is the running back, and they begin on the ground with the NFL rushing champion for no game. Tackled by the safety Terrence Keel here at the same sense. 
Third down and nine. The deep drop. The little hop by Pennington. And then he finds the open man up at the 44-yard line. And as you suggested, John, they go early to Santana Moss and pick up a first down to hold it. I think this is a smart play. James Girth to snap it. In the ring. And the kick is wide to the right. Snap. Once the dollars got to be as big as they are, not only does it affect players who are currently in the league, as Breeze is going to go for six and open there and making the catch, but out of bounds was Keenan McCardell. The back judge comes over. There'll be a conference here, and what he's basically saying is that he didn't have control of it with both feet in bounds on the board and that's the reason you hear 70,000 people screaming and the flag the challenge flag from Schottenheimer comes out there was a conference amongst the two officials and they may not even and have to challenge the no, they the will. Field that it was here comes Hockley. the receiver pulled the ball into his chest and when he had it in his chest in control both feet were down it's a touchdown as we suggested 26 yards and the touchdown the better route between the corner and the safety Cading for the extra point. So on a third down play, three receivers to the left. Pennington looks that way, goes that way, and hits McCarrens over the middle. He gets free, and he has a first down to the 14-yard line, just four to play in the half. Pennington sets up in the pocket and then throws part of the 13-yard line going downfield. Swings it out to the outside here, and that's caught by Anthony Beck, who waltzes in to the end zone for a touchdown. 13. Doug Bryan for the point after. Oh, boy, that was close. Just good. Hitting 67%, which is what he normally does. About two-thirds of his passes. Martin runs into his own man and then turns nothing into a little something up to the 40-yard line for a gain of about four. A toss play. Nice nifty running there by Martin. Finally takes pass this time. Short drop. And the pass to McCarrens is caught. Again, he was draped by Drayton Florence. And Pennington got it right there. And McCarrens makes the catch. And McCarrens go territory at the 47-yard line. Fake draw. And Pennington going for six. Deep down the field, and it's caught by Santana Moss for a touchdown. Quentin Jammer and Jerry Wilson were both there, and the pass is perfectly thrown. Moss makes the grab 47 yards, and for the first time in the game, the Jets have the lead for the extra point. And so the Jets holding San Diego offensively three and out for the Chargers. And then the Jets get the ball and go 75 yards in two and a half minutes. Touchdown. A four-yard line. He's a He's a Pretty much a free play on second and short. Instead, they play it conservatively. Motion. The fake to Tomlinson. Breeze going for six. Last play. Breeze. Throws and that's a little shovel pass. Tomlinson, but he gets round draft choice, as I said before, pretty high for a kicker out of Iowa. Although, when the other team only has 10 guys in there for two plays, you mm. kind of wish you would have taken advantage of it. Squandered opportunity, 35 yard attempt, and that one is just good. Antonio Gates for a big play, and then you need a run, and you give it to Ladanian Tomlinson. Look at the moves that he has. He just lets them go. And then, then the only guy that he couldn't beat is that ump. Up in San Diego. From the nine. Tomlinson. Uh-uh. Yard and Breeze stepping up. He's going to run. Drew Breeze takes it to the one-yard line. It's the blocking back, and he's great. And they give it to Tomlinson. And Tomlinson will not get in, and that's going to set up the whole ball game here for the San Diego Chargers, or at least a fourth and goal. Tomlinson goes in motion. Breeze looking, looking, under pressure, throws up a prayer. Knocked down by the Jets, and there's a flag down. 
They're indicating and it's against the Jets. I think it was against Eric Barton. I think he hit Drew Brees in the head after he threw the ball. Wow. 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 Watch Eric Barton right there. Oh, see, the left hand was probably okay, but watch when he pulls that right there. Left hand okay, but that right hand to the head, they're going to call that every time. I mean, you want the one. And they're going to throw it. And Green is going to throw in the end zone for a touchdown to Gates. And Kading bangs it through with 11 seconds to play. He comes up in the shotgun here. A high snap, and then he gives it to Tomlinson. And Tomlinson tries to roll his way to a first down. In the 35 again with a backup center. Out of the shotgun with a wet football. And Reeves throws, and that's a first down. Eric Parker makes the catch. First time where Nate Kading had a chance to win it from 40 yards out, but you see it there, wide right, no good, and the Jets had all the momentum at that point. Sets up a short Doug Bryan field goal to win it. 20 to 17 in overtime, despite 319 yards passing from Drew Brees. After the game, I talked to Coach Schottenheimer about the field goal that wasn't.